Good morning. We are up before the lawnmowers and leaf blowers here in Savannah, Georgia. My name is Timothy Halloran. I am an astrologer and a fellow inhabitant upon this ceaselessly fascinating planet in this uh, relentless year of 2016. And we're talking about a period of submergence. We're talking about submergence in general in these videos into the collective situation, but in particular, uh, talking about this forthcoming month of November, we're very much talking about a submergence into the collective situation here on this planet in the year of 2016. Uh, so today is October 26th, and I'm going to begin by talking about uh, the astrological weather as always, what's going on with the various planetary alignments. And then we'll be focusing upon a new moon in Scorpio that is approaching on October 30th, this coming Sunday, that will be foreshadowing the forthcoming month of November as well as Scorpio season. So, to begin with, about a week ago, we had Venus enter the sign of Sagittarius, and we also had Mars pass Pluto, beginning a new Mars-Pluto cycle which is one of these planetary cycles that's very important. And the Mars cycles are two-year cycles. And when any planet passes Pluto, it gets an update, there is a death, there is a rebirth, and we're beginning a new two-year cycle. Now that Mars-Pluto conjunction is intense. It is relentless. It is happening in the sign of Capricorn. And so this is so much to do, such a little time, so many responsibilities, so many things we are accountable for, and it's like we have really been busting ass these last couple weeks and most likely are continuing this type of endeavor as Mars is still in Capricorn for a couple more weeks. Um, and so what we can say about this Mars-Pluto cycle is we have been really working hard to set a new pace in terms of our output, in terms of what we are doing in the world, we are again initiating a new cycle. So we have been really working hard to create a new pace for ourselves, a new routine, a new way of using our energy and drive in the world as it relates to our work, our duties, responsibilities, etc. Now Pluto can also be, and Mars is, our own desires. And so this is also really looking into our own instinctual, unconscious desires. And we just had the Sun move into Scorpio just a few days ago on Monday. The, uh, or I'm sorry, it was over the weekend on the 23rd. And so there is this continuation of really submerging into the underworld. And that's what we're going to talk about during the Scorpio season is the underworld, which has to do with penetrating into the actual unconscious reality, which is essentially the cause of all of the experiences, the trials, the tribulations that we often go through. It's coming from a very deep, oftentimes unconscious, invisible part of reality. And Scorpio is this penetrative x-ray vision. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, which they recently discovered actually is emitting x-rays for some reason they cannot explain. Scorpio is this penetrative, can see through the surface as if it is made of glass. Submergence into the unconscious or the underworld. And so we've been dealing a lot with the underworld, with unconscious desires, and this type of really rigid, potentially frustrating, so much to do, somewhat exhausting, setting a new standard and a new pace in terms of the energy and the output that we are putting out. And so, Mars going through this Pluto-Uranus square zone that's been active for years. This is this very, you know, gears within gears being churned. You know, it, it, it can feel like we're being trampled. And we do have Mars coming up to a square with Uranus this approaching Friday the 28th. And so, we have to somewhat be experimental. We can't be totally rigid with everything that we're doing, everything that we're committed to, because we can, you know, this Pluto-Uranus energy with Mars there, it's just like we can get squished, we can get juiced, and we can kind of crumble apart, and then this Scorpio energy is like taking us down into what happens when we're exhausted, 
what happens when we're depleted of energy or we feel that there's so much weight on us. We start to notice our unconscious tendencies. We start to notice our escape patterns, our coping mechanisms. And this is a lot of the stuff that we can be dealing with at this time. Now, like we said a week ago, Venus entered the sign of Sagittarius. And now Venus is approaching a conjoinment with Saturn. That's coming up this weekend, Saturday, October 29th. And so this is also a time where we can be taking our relationships very seriously. This is a time of looking at our own goals, our values, how we are oriented towards these things, how we are sharing in our singular goals, our singular direction in our partnerships with our relationships, and it is a time of maturity. It is a time of really taking our relationships, their dynamics, very seriously. And this theme is going to continue through the next couple weeks. The following weekend, this is going to be, uh, you know, Friday, November 4th through the weekend of the 5th and the 6th, Venus is square to Chiron and in a trine to Uranus. And this is a time of really looking at some of these dynamics. This is an opportunity for us to revise, to sort of experiment how we have looked at our own unconscious dynamics in relationship with all of the Scorpio stuff going on and Sun's going to be conjoining Black Moon Lilith in the next couple weeks. We can be looking at sexual desires. We can be looking at our unconscious nature. And in relationships, it is a vehicle of evolution. Relationships, period, is a vehicle of evolution through love, through experience, through coming together, and oftentimes bumping our own unconsciousnesses together, causing a friction between our own unconscious nature. So that way we can sort of bring up our own unconscious nature, make it visible, make it apparent, and in so doing, learn and grow about these dynamics that can be very much beneath the surface. And so this is going on through these next couple weeks as well. And we want to be, you know, with Mars square to Uranus and then Venus coming into trying to Uranus the next weekend, you know, we want to be open to new possibilities. We don't want to be totally rigid with, oh, this is my truth, this is my path, and it's done, it's settled. Venus can join Saturn this weekend of the 29th. It really forces us to sit down in a sort of more matured, wizened, not really naive, looking at our own values, what we really see is this is my truth, this is what I set out to do, this stuff is in Sagittarius, which is this one-pointed goal, and also our relationships. It's really sitting down and saying, like, listen, this is what we're doing together, and listen, this may not be working out totally. We need to try some new things out or maybe leave this behind and move on and, and explore and try something new and try something different in that type of practical and mature way, you know. We're going to have some time here where we're exploring these different areas and then we'll come back together and we'll talk about it. You know, this is this time of really maturing and furthering our own relationships as this deeper, more complicated, murkier area is being brought to the surface and explored via the zodiac sign of Scorpio. So we just had the Sun enter Scorpio this last weekend and now we had uh, we just had Mercury enter Scorpio Monday the 24th and tomorrow the 27th Mercury is going to pass the Sun in his superior conjunction and is going to be trying to Neptune on the south node and that's going to take us into this new moon approaching on October 30th 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 degrees, 40 minutes of Scorpio, that is going to be trying to Neptune on the Moon's south node. So just this past weekend, we had the Sun enter Scorpio. And then on Monday, the 24th, Mercury entered Scorpio. And now tomorrow, the 27th, Mercury is going to pass the Sun in his superior conjunction which means that simply, you know, Mercury is farthest away from the Sun from our point of view and is moving the quickest. And this is a superior conjunction as it passes the Sun and gets a realization, an update. It is insightful. It is forward-looking. It is eureka moments. 
It is a time of fruition and manifestation in terms of what we are seeing. And Mercury in Scorpio is the detective. Like Sherlock Holmes, this very obsessed, very restless, always having to solve problems, always having to dig up the truth in this kind of obsessed, deep, looking beneath the surface type of way. So when we're talking about this superior conjunction between Mercury and the Sun in the sign of Scorpio, this is deep. Again, X-ray vision, seeing beneath the surface as if it's made of glass. We're talking about human lie detector capability. And this new moon is trying to Neptune, which means that in particular this next month, because the new moon foreshadows the coming month, the coming month, we're talking about penetrating into the collective unconsciousness. Scorpio is the unconsciousness. It's that which allows us to see this cause of all of the issues that's going on the surface. Neptune is the collective unconsciousness. It's the dynamics, it's the beliefs that we accept culturally that have been going on for thousands and thousands of years that shape us in such a way that we're typically even unaware of these dynamics because they are all pervasive is the collective situation, right? It's like we don't know what another planet's collective situations is and can compare through contrast. We only know this ocean of collective that we are submerged into, have been conditioned by and lived in since the day of our birth. And this month we are looking into the collective issues and we're seeing beneath the surface the things that could have been previously hidden to us. The dynamics, the situations that could be murkier, more complicated, less black and white and easy and one size fits all. That is not reality. Scorpio is reality. Reality is not black and white and easy does it and one size fits all and just possess this one truth and everything else gets taken care of automatically. That, my friends, is called wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. And what we're going to be seeing this next month, which is really a culmination of this entire year of 2016, Saturn squared to Neptune, governmental paranoia, authoritative paranoia, questioning collective belief systems, questioning our traditions and our upbringing and our culture. And there is a general distrust of these things going on. And we're seeing a culmination of this phase, which is leading us into the realization that wishful thinking does not get the work done. And we're going to be talking about Neptune on the Moon's South Node through this next coming month, particularly in the next video. Neptune is going to be exactly conjoined the Moon's South Node November 17th. This new moon trying to that Neptune is foreshadowing this entire month that is investigating this issue of wishful thinking, of believing ourselves into success. And generally what we can say about this is, you know, Neptune and these, you know, this very type of Piscinian, it can be very dreamlike, it can be very ethereal, and, you know, the, the Pisces nature is getting challenged right now. Like we've been saying this entire year of 2016, it's the idealists, it's the philosophers, it's the spiritual daydreamers, which are in particularly are having a tough time because reality is tough, it's real. This is a highly Scorpio Capricorn time. It's like we said, we've got Venus conjoined Saturn this weekend. The next weekend, Venus is square Chiron and the moon's in Capricorn. We're taking stuff seriously. This is like, prove it. Prove what's going on in reality. Prove that you're able to meet your goals. We've been talking about this this entire year. Because here's the point. Optimism is great, except when it's ignoring the work that needs to be done. It's not like the work doesn't exist because we just believe that it's not there. That is the realization that's coming on and going on this next month, is we can't just believe that everything's going to be hunky-dory when the actual situation that's presenting itself to us says no. There is work that needs to be done. And so this is the penetrative X-ray vision of Scorpio bringing up the collective unconscious situation of Neptune 
which even takes us back through the entire past age of Pisces, the past 2,000 years of human history, how it has shaped our collective beliefs, how these beliefs are either helping us or not. And one thing we can say is not helping us at this time is blind faith. Blind faith is not helping us at this time. Blind faith, you know, there is a purpose to faith, but it's not the same as blind faith and where blind faith oftentimes lead us, which is the blind leading the blind and thinking that's how life should be and that's the best potential. No, my friends, when we're talking about faith, that means that there are universal principles that even when life is getting complicated and there's layer upon layer of things going on, those universal principles still apply and we can trust them. When we're talking about blind faith, however, which is trust in a leader, trust in an organization, trust in a goal that has no evidence, that has no backing to it, that is simply, oh, there's the authority, they say they're in charge, they're wearing the right clothes, they're, they're dressed like a priest, they're dressed like a gentleman, therefore they must know. Oh, look, the person's on television, he's wearing a microphone, he's doing a newscast, he must know the news, he must know the truth, he is someone that we can trust, etc. And we're entering this time where it's just like, hell no. We are realizing the truth goes very much beneath the surface. The truth has yet to be exposed. It's complicated, it's murky, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. Easy does it, one solution is going to take us all the way. We have to wake up to the messiness of the situation that we actually find ourselves in. And the messiness of this situation is what we need to be honest about and not simply believe ourselves out of the messiness of the situation. Oh, well, if I just sing my song and I just do my artwork and I don't do any type of physical work, I don't go out into the world, I don't meet people and I just expect money to come to me and everything to work out really well, we can basically anticipate that this is not the actual situation here. Scorpio is also a time where we have lots of distractions, you know, lots of complexities, lots of layers of things going on. And again, this is reality. We have to be ready to go layer after layer after layer after layer to the root cause of these issues. And what we can say and anticipate with Neptune on the south node is because this endeavor is going on this forthcoming month, it can create chaos. Chaos. Because the majority of people have a very simple, unrealistic comprehension of reality, the given situation, our own relation to our own nature, our own unconsciousness is for the most part swept under the rug, and we just accept these things. Oh yeah, that's totally fine to behave that way. Oh no, there's nothing going on beneath the surface, and that's just naive. The danger of this time is naivety. We don't just want to blind faith ourselves off a cliff because somebody else said and somebody else said and somebody else believed. This is the time for the truth to be exposed. And so this type of exposing of the truth, you know, with the Mercury-Sun conjoinment, it can be seen. It can be understood mentally. But when we're dealing with Scorpio in particular, we're talking about feelings as well. Typically, the unconscious nature can't always be rationally seen and understood because it's so murky and so beneath the surface. And so, people are incredibly naive in reading this deeper side of our own nature, you know. People just accept the billboards and the TV propaganda and what's put in front of their face, you know. And this is how advertisements work. But if you have any brain or any clue or any intuition, you see those TV advertisements and you know that it's just psychology that's aimed to make us excited about a product so we can go buy it. And it may not necessarily say that that product is going to make us happy for the rest of our life. That's what we're talking about here in this situation. And so this is deep feelings. We typically feel what's going on beneath the surface. In our own unconsciousness, there's something there. It's something big. It goes into my past. It goes into my childhood. It's created these dynamics. It's created these defense mechanisms. It's like we feel this stuff before we totally understand it inside and out. And so this new moon in Scorpio, 
trying to Neptune is also a very mystical aspect. This is a mystical time that we are entering. These water signs of Scorpio and Pisces, where Neptune is in Pisces, Sun and Moon's going to be in Scorpio, these are very mystical signs. Water signs cannot be comprehended rationally. They can only be felt. Scorpio and Pisces, these are the signs of the mystic. And there is something that attracts us as well. Again, when we're dealing with Scorpio, it's like Sherlock Holmes. He's got this obsessiveness. I want to really figure this thing out. And we can be trying to figure out our own obsess obsessions. Obsessions, taboos, addictions. These things all play into the unconscious nature. These are, uh, you know, they're coping mechanisms, they're defense mechanisms that we formed early on in life in order to survive in this very complicated reality, to protect ourselves. And that's how these addictions, these obsessions form. And so we're really investigating into these things. And there's something attractive about this. It beckons us into the depth. It goes deeper. You know, this is like Neo in the Matrix. Do you want to take the red pill or the blue pill? Do you want to go down the rabbit hole? And how can we refuse? Is our curiosity not going to actually want to see what's going on beneath reality? Or are we going to be in this situation where it's just like, oh, okay, we're living in the Matrix, everything's kind of fake, and I guess we'll just stay there. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's just how it is. We'll just stay, you know, bubble heads that are really oblivious to the somewhat more treacherous reality that we actually live in. You know, it's like that Matrix movie gets a little grotesque. He wakes up to a reality that's dark, that's me mechanical, there's machines, uh, the, the whole world has become polluted and the sky is, you know, covered in clouds and all this. And it's just like, you know what? That movie is a little prophetic, isn't it? And we need to go down the rabbit hole if we actually want to improve the situation in our reality. And you know what? Scorpio is hell. And what I'm going to say is that hell, the way that we have thought hell is, via collective beliefs, is a fraud. It's completely wrong. We need to rewrite our definition of hell right now. Hell equals transformation. Hell is the function of transformation. When we are feeling intensity, when we're feeling pain, when it's that in the grind, grist in the mill, fire on our feet, walking on the hot coals type of feeling, we all know this feeling. We all know what it's like to experience hell on planet Earth, which is a planet that we get to experience these things. We get to experience on this planet what it's like to have someone dictate over us against our will. It is possible to have these experiences here. But what goes on through these tumultuous, tragic, uncomfortable experiences is transformation that inevitably takes us into a transcendental awakening, coming out of the pain through realizing that the pain is not a punishment. It's not because we did anything wrong that these bad things happen in the world. It is provoking us to learn and grow into the truth and to become servants of the truth. Scorpio leads into Sagittarius, which is the truth. It's also this understanding of reality. Oh my goodness, this is not a black and white. There's the good guy, there's the bad guy. Somebody wins, somebody loses, somebody goes to heaven, somebody burns for all eternity. This is a very unrealistic approach to reality. We need to understand that when we're going through an uncomfortable time and everything seems like it's laid on, we are transforming our own nature to step into that level of invincibility, which comes from our comprehension of the big picture point of view. That there is a season for everything. And even if it's the season for everything falling to shit and for delusions to be lifted off and for uncomfortable realities and realizations to be made, that season is in service of us, in order to us to mature into better, more functional, more healthy, more loving, more harmonious, more compassionate realities. That's what we want. And so this is the time to be very strong. And what we can say is that it's the wise that are doing the work of realizing how bad the situation actually is before the rest are capable of doing that because the majority of people are controlled by fear. And because fear is so prevalent in our 
world via collective belief rather than reality. It's fear of the enemy, fear of other nations, fear of demons, fear of the devil, fear of original sin, and so we have to work our way out of eternal damnation. These collective fears prevent us from realizing the work that we need to do because it's too scary for us to actually comprehend the reality while we possess these beliefs that convince us that hell is a place of eternal damnation and punishment and these types of things. And so because this is Scorpio time and because Halloween is essentially an unconscious celebration of our cultural projection of Scorpio, when we're talking about demons and these types of things, you know, I'm just going to mention that, you know, there is such a thing as a really negative being, can be like a demon, but they're exceptionally rare. More than likely, when we're dealing with people that are causing problems in the world, it's because they're wounded people that are ignorant and have been raised in such a way that they don't get reality. They don't understand how to take care of themselves, so they don't know how to take care of other people. So they hurt themselves, they hurt other people, it's wounded babies wounding other people. What demon usually means is a part of ourself that we have suppressed, we have been conditioned to shove away, that we think is bad, that we think is too scary to accept into our own reality and existence. And we are witnessing this on the individual level, and we are witnessing this on the collective level this forthcoming month. All the stuff that's been swept under, swept under, swept under. Oh no, that's not how it actually is. No, 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 it's not that bad. It's great. Everything's fine. Oh yeah, this is, you know, it's, it's just, oh, it's just one little slip up. Oh, you know, just a Freudian slip, you know. And it's, no, it's, it's deep, it's beneath the surface, and it's real. But when we deny, 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 and blind faith, blind faith, blind faith, optimism, Oh, everything's great, wishful thinking, oh, I found the magic pill that's going to heal everybody, I found the cure-all, I found the, you know, the spiritual one-liner. We deny the reality that is still a part of reality, it's still a part of our nature, but because each of us as human beings have the power and the capability of free will, which means that we essentially do somewhat get to create our own reality, you know, you can really make believe some things so well that it becomes pretty much your reality and that's called psychosis or being delusional, etc. We totally have that capability and if we're going to be totally real, the vast majority of us are like this on some level or another. We're in denial and we need to be willing to admit this. Personally, I'm in denial of a lot of shit that's a little too scary for me to handle right now in the world. I don't really want to look at this stuff because it's too crazy and you know this is going to be the chaos that's coming this next month is it's just like ah there's too much stuff and it's too complicated. I don't know who to believe because there's not a a winner and a loser. There's no one that I can really blame for all the problems in the world on anymore. There's no perfect role model for me to grip on to their foot and be taken all the way to heaven here right now? This is reality. Hello, let's just be real about this. Because if we can be real about this, that provokes and awakens us into having to own the actual situation. Okay, well if there's no role model that's going to take me all the way without me having to put in any effort, I'm going to have to do some work myself. And if there's nobody that I can blame and scapegoat for all the world's problems, well, I'm going to have to do some work myself. We're going to have to deal with these issues ourselves that are collective issues. They have to do with the stuff that's in me and in you. We can address them in ourselves. We can address them in a group. But either way, when we suppress and deny and say, that's not true, that's not me, that's bad, that's evil, that's dark, we create sub-personalities out of the nature and reality that's still nature and reality that we've denied and those things are called demons and they follow us everywhere, but they're actually like our own shadow. And so Scorpio is the sign of Tantra. It's the sign where mastery happens through realizing non-duality within the dual nature of our world by understanding that the light and the shadow are connected. There would be no shadow if there were no light. They are connected, they're one and the same. And so when we're doing this type of investigation of our shadow, of our own consciousness, kind of, you know, leave wishful thinking to the side for a little bit. Okay, we're not going to manifest our way 
into the golden age or the new age, period. I'm really frustrated with constantly seeing this in the world, like, oh, we just, you know, believe our way into the new age, and it's just like, no, we have to be very, very real about this deeper, more complicated stuff that is in you and is in me. Be real about it. Admit it. We're not perfect, enlightened beings, and you're not going to believe your way to that state. This is the same as just saying, oh, if I meditate all day long and all I do is breathe, everything is going to take care of itself. No. Meditation is a tool for doing this type of healing work. And healing happens through weaving down into the underworld, confronting the wounds, the issues, the murkiness that originated in our past. So that way we can bring the light of healing awareness down into the darkness without the fear of going into the darkness as hell and bad. No, 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 no. When you're going into hell, that's doing the transformative work for the benefit of yourself and the whole. That way we can weave into the past, into the darkness, confront the wounds, the issues that are there beneath the surface, the cause of all this chaos we see in the world, and then we bring via that healing awareness realization how we can fix these dynamics through actually confronting them and seeing what they actually are. Weaving the past with the future, the potential, how we're improving things, how we're taking things forward in a way that actually works and benefits us. And this is Tantra. It's going into darkness in order to bring the light there, in order for expansion and illumination to take us forward. And so the weaving in between the light and the dark is not a problem. It's how healing happens. It's reverberation. It's cyclic. It's not good and evil, bad guy, good guy. It's us using reality through the mechanism which it is. This is evolution. Again, hell is the function of transformation. This is Pluto. This is Scorpio. It is evolution. By going down, by confronting the base root issues that the vast majority of people are afraid to confront, we are becoming the forces of evolution and goodness in the world. So, I wish you all the best in that endeavor. I'm going to close this video by playing the Death Whistle, which was created by my good friend who lives in the mountains. He's a Shiva devotee. Shiva is the destroyer. His female co counterpart, Parvati, her most intense, fierce form is Kali. And Kali is a wonderful, descriptive archetype of Scorpio. She is the transformer. She is real. She's intense. She's hellish. But she is a benefactor. She's a goddess. She wants us to strip away all the bullshit, all the distractions, all the superficiality, all the things that are covering up the truth so only the truth remains. And so just as the death whistle turns over, tills over the earth, and transforms the earth, makes it fertile for a new life. Let us be willing to go down, penetrate the earth, till it over, and make it fertile for new beginnings and new realities going on from this point forward. I'm glad I still have battery. So, I want to throw a shout out out to Costa Rica, astrology rising in spring of 2017. This is an astrology conference that I'm attending that is unlike any that I've ever heard. The astrologers that are attending are all fantastic. They are all my role models and heroes. And so I so hope to meet some of you in Costa Rica in spring of 2017. I'm going to attach a link below to that. Thank you to all of you who contribute to my work, who purchase my astrology readings. This is what I do for a living. I'm going to be changing my astrology readings probably in the next couple weeks. I'm still offering the readings, but how I do it, uh, the various way it's set up is still always very experimental and changing. So again, it is such a pleasure to be able to connect with like minds, to be able to talk about this material with people that are really down and ready to understand it. I cannot thank you enough for the amount of peace of mind that you bring me. Thank you so much for being out there. Thank you so much for allowing this to spark conversations and for us to talk about this stuff, for us to go down into our own personal issues, our own wounds, our own underworld, openly, without fear. This is the boldness of the spiritual warrior. And we need spiritual warriors in this age. To be a spiritual person doesn't mean that you have wishful thinking and blind faith. It means that you are ready to confront the 
fullest spectrum experiences of life. That is Scorpio. And it is only through Scorpio that we get to Sagittarius, which is the truth, the spiritual nature, the whole. We have to be willing to accept the full spectrum reality of what is. And so in that endeavor, I look forward to exploring that spectrum with you this forthcoming month of November. And happy Halloween. Take care.